Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with Tony Felder. He's a star basketball player over at Malden Catholic. Uh, he has been leading the team with about 25 points per game, about nine assists. He's an absolute stud. Tony, thank you so much for coming on the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Sure, thank you for having me. Tony, tell me a little bit about the season so far. You guys have been playing extremely well, about 17-2. and two. What's been going so well for this Malden Catholic team? Um, we're a young team. We still got a lot of things to get better at, like I've been saying to everybody, because mm. nobody knows, like, the issues that go on and, like, why you're, like, in the team, but we're just trying to get better each and every day and trying to improve, because we're, it's a group of a bunch of young guys, so trying to get them to get up to that level, have confidence in themselves, and just who. Yeah, for sure. And does that add an element, you know, you being a senior, you being a guy with offers that's been around the around the block a few times, does that sort of add to the leadership role you have, showing the younger guys the ropes and being there for them? No, being a leader, at the beginning of the year, it was, it was tough, but gradually the guys just, like, they just learned to listen. And once they, once we do that, like, they listen to me, I can yell at them now and they'll just take it rather than coming at them. Yeah. I sort of say so. It, leadership is just if you work hard and guys see you working hard and they know you're going to work hard, they'll follow and they'll just come. And the, it's a bunch of young guys, so they listen to me. I just, I love them to death. So, and they love me. Yeah. And that's how you know when you can yell at someone and they actually they can take it. They, right. they know there's that respect there and that you're not just being a dick. You want the best for right. the team. Yeah, no. that's where it's at, man. And so one one win I definitely wanted to talk about um, because it like stood out to me the most was the Beverly game. When I saw the score from the Beverly game, I was like Malden Catholic. And I knew you guys were scary because of things that other teams had told me from before. But I was like, oh, my effing God, like these guys are wicked good. Tell me a little bit about the Beverly game, because that was a team that they were undefeated until they met you guys. Is that right? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they got a bunch of studs. So, yeah, tell me about the Beverly game. So, in the Beverly game, we had a game plan, basically just defend, take out their best player, and just run the floor. We know, we know, like, with the guys we have, the talent we have, we can beat anybody, we can compete with anybody, but we just – sometimes, like, when it's a big game, sometimes, like, having young guys, sometimes we get a little nervous. So, I just try to, like, tell my team that we're fine, we're, we're straight, just – Make sure we take out this one guy who's averaging 30 points probably this year. Is that, is that Ryder Frost? Yeah, Ryder, Ryder. He's, okay. he's, I think I'm talking to him in like two days. <laughs> he, he can shoot the hell out of the ball. He can <laughs> do it all. So we was just like, just take him out. So we had a guy named Nick Martinez guard him, and he did a great job. The point guard is very solid as well, and I guarded him. And we just try to, like, make them uncomfortable so that's basically what we did we used our physicality and made them uncomfortable and we didn't even shoot the ball great but we was hitting enough shots for us to get 80 points so that's yeah oh my god so impressive and yeah Ryder I think is the uh Northeast Conference MVP that came out today or yesterday um yeah. he's an absolute stud but I saw that you guys had beat them you did you like it was like a 30 piece how much did you beat them by uh we beat them by like 25 pretty sure 79 54 yeah which is crazy to me just because they were an undefeated team they're highly ranked and I was wondering you know is this just show how good Malden Catholic and the Catholic conference is or does it show that maybe the competition Beverly facing wasn't as strong as I thought but I think no. it's a little bit of both I think it's yeah. a little bit of both if I'm being honest um yeah, yeah the, the Catholic conference is absolutely loaded I mean tell me a little bit about some of the teams now, playing in the Catholic Conference, I played for four years now. Like, you know, every game isn't going to be – like, every game is going to be a challenge, especially when you're playing on the road. Like, playing home, it's a little easier because you know you got a whole bunch of people on your side. But when you're on the road, I'm telling you, the kids, they be – they taunt. The kids, the crowd is ridiculous. <laughs> every single go-to. So, it's just like you're in there by yourself. And you, the five guys are on four – you guys got to like really be connected to get wins on the road in the Catholic Conference. Like it's it's hard, especially my my first two years. We I I don't even think I won a game on the road in the Catholic Conference. But then third and fourth year, finally won a Catholic Conference championship last year. But this year we didn't get to. But 
We won a couple games on the road. We won every other game besides BCI on the road. So mm. can't complain. Um, wish we could get those back, but it's whatever. Right. What's the toughest student section to face in the Catholic Conference? Out of all four years of this year? Uh, I guess all four years. All four years, definitely CM. But Ooh. I from this year is they they made their run like this year bci's crowd section is different yeah chirp nation <laughs> yeah oh my god uh, yeah so i talked to mike Lochnane um from bc high about a month ago he's the catholic conference mvp for people that, that don't know yeah. and obviously malden catholic was a huge matchup for both uh for both teams on both ends of that and he was explaining you know, that just basically everything went well for them. The matchups were challenging you guys. He said um, an athletic team, a challenging team. I mean, you know, so many things went right for BC High in those games. But what do you think went wrong for Malden Catholic? What would you do differently against the BC High team to get the win? Well, like I said, we're, we're very young. So putting our, like our young group of guys out there was it was just tough if that makes sense. Like, we're but young guys. Like, I'm the only senior that, like, is there. We have two seniors, but, like, basically I'm the only senior. So, like, it's, like, having a young group of guys shooting the ball, confidence. We just couldn't score the ball. Like, both games we couldn't score. They did a great job defensively. They have a great coach, great players. So, they did. They Their game plan was on point. I, I give them all that. They, they beat us twice, and it, the games aren't even close. So, I, I wish you can get them back, but they, they did everything right. Yeah, it's tough, man. How would you describe M Mike Lochnane as a player for people that haven't seen him? He's a great player. He can shoot the ball off the dribble. He can, he can facilitate, and people don't really notice it, but his leadership is, like, the way he can talk to his players is, like, similar to how I can. Like, he, he can talk mm -hmm. to his players, listen to him, especially his dad. His Like, his dad, he's the... He's a great coach. He just every single year, you know, you're gonna play BCI. You know, it's gonna be a, a very big challenge just because you know how smart they are, and that's they're a very smart team and they, they do their thing. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's like a Disney movie. His dad coaching and him dropping forty points on teams. I mean, it's it's wild. It's absolutely wild. Um, how would you describe your style of play to kind of switch the question on to you? Um, for people that haven't seen you play, how would you Describe the way you get things done on the court. Um, I, I'm like a scoring guard, I would say, but I love to get my team going. So, like, try to get my guys as many shots as they can, try to get everybody involved, because the more your team is involved, the better I can play, if that makes sense. Mm. So, and leadership is probably, like, what I would say is, like, the quality that I'm trying to grow in and continue to get better, because you can always be a better leader. Like, I've been this year, especially this year, last year, I like really like up to my leadership role and I'm still trying to continue learning from people. Like, how do you do this? How do you get your team to do this? Things like that. Mm -hmm. So I was, and defensively, that's the part where I'm trying to grow the most, like running every day, doing things so I can stay in shape and guard the team's best player and score the ball offensively. Like ever since that BC high game, that's what it really taught me. Like I need to learn how to guard a team's best player and score the basketball. So that's how I say is like what I'm trying to become and what I could do now. Yeah, for sure, man. Very, very cool. And and moving into the postseason, um, you guys are ranked fairly high, but what what are you at at the latest um MIA rankings? What where are you guys been placed at? Pretty sure two. BC I just I think we just beat um Springfield Central, so I think we just moved up to two. Wow. And is that in division one or two? Oh, it's like statewide, statewide. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, but is it statewide division one or two? It's both combined. Like, oh, and division oh. two one though. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Say it again. I think I think we're confused. It's the it's the, the zoom yeah. a little bit. <laughs> there's two rankings. So there's there's a division two rankings because we're a division two team and right. in division number one. But yeah. like statewide rankings where all the teams combined. Like with D one, two, D three, D four, all those combined, and we're two. Oh, word. Okay, I see that. Um, so yeah, you're in the MIA Division two. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but when, and who, and who puts together the all state rankings, is that like the Boston Herald you're referring to, or is there another outlet? Max preps, max preps. I just look at theirs, Boston Herald's, they have their own too. I look at this sometimes and the globe, but I don't know the latest for all of them, but I just checked like this morning because it like it has a notification every time like our rankings change for MC for Max Preps. I just looked this morning and had us at two and one. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, wh- who do you think? Um, who do you think gives Malden Catholic the most love out of all those outlets? Out of Boston Globe or the Herald or is there a local paper? Who gives you guys the most love? I really don't know. Um. Danny Ventura, I feel like Danny Ventura gives us the most love. Him, he, I feel like he actually loves us. There's a lot of people who don't, though, like, at the same time. But I feel like Danny Ventura, he's a really good guy. He really loves us. Oh, man, yeah. Well, I had Danny V on the podcast, and he's a good dude. Yes. Um, and he's a, he's an old school guy, too. And Malden Catholic sports have been stellar for so long that I'm not surprised that he's uh, he's on top of things. And it's also Eastern eastern mass because where is it in malden yeah okay hence the name i guess that makes sense you know my grandfather went back in the day actually he was like a he football went, star yeah Sam, what's his name what's his name uh daniel bennett yes, sir. yeah yeah he ended up like playing at tufts um and i think but i think he got an offer to texas a&m allegedly i don't know family folklore maybe but uh pretty cool sir <laughs> So you actually have some offers on the table. Pretty, pretty cool. I was saying UMass, Georgetown. What's it, um, what's it like to get those offers? Is that, are you, are you nervous about the process? Are you excited about it? How do you feel? Um, I'm just waiting it out, seeing where others come. Um, mm-hmm. I'm excited. At the same time, I'm nervous. I just want to be able in college to like really show the best me, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't want in college just to be there and say I got to this place I actually want to show why I got to that place if that makes sense right yeah you want to put the best version of yourself forward your best foot forward yeah I'm sure you're getting a lot of advice too from people just like all over your life and it's I imagine that would be hard too, being like 18 years old having like the whole world kind of weighing in on your life now you you always get people's advice sometimes listen sometimes you don't it's just like you really want to listen to the people who's really in your circle because like mm-hmm. they're the people who really know what's going on and what's happening. So always listen to those people around you and the people who really love and care for you. Yeah. And I won't, I won't ask you to tell me um, what the decision will be or when it will come, but how will it come? Are you going to put out a Twitter post an Instagram post? Are you going to pick up a hat? How do you, how do you envision yourself uh, committing? Uh, I'll probably just do a video, honestly. Mm-hmm. Just- Post it on every all platforms, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put the state on notice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> who do you who do you who do you think makes the best basketball highlights in the state? There's a whole culture of that that's just been exploding recently. I've had some yeah. of guys in my podcast. That's There's so many awesome. guys doing it well. Nah, there is. I, I can name you a few guys who I think are like personally the best. Mm-hmm. But a few guys. <laughs> Can it be just Mass? Is it just Massachusetts or Connecticut? Cause yeah, yeah, no, whoever. Like Max videos, that's my guy. He he's always with us on sparrings. Bobby, Bobby Media, he's really good. Aaron Cooley, Bio, he's really good. Um, Gaines Visuals, really good. Six one seven, really good. Um, and I gotta shout out One Tap Media because that he goes to my school. He does his thing. He with us. So there's a lot of great people. The Connect Media, he's really good as well. He just was with the Celtics, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I can go down the list. I don't know who I'm forgetting, but I can go down the list. So there's a lot of great guys doing their thing with the camera. Crazy. And it's such it's a vast culture of guys doing it, too. And it's right. funny, you shout out, like, Bobby, who plays college basketball at Amherst, Aaron Cooley, who plays at Brown. I mean, like, a lot of these guys can, like, play and you know they're videographers too it's like, like who knew yeah mm. wild yeah do you have any other hobbies or passions or interests outside of basketball or are you just like balls life kind of guy um hobbies outside of basketball um <laughs> um i don't know 
I, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. I, I know I could draw, though. I could really draw. Really? Yeah. But you I, like I don't doodle, You, like, doodle in class or, like, draw, draw? Like, how do you like I, to do it? I'll draw. Like, if you want me to draw you, I could draw you. For real? Yeah. <laughs> new <laughs> uh, new channel profile picture, maybe? Just get a <laughs> drawing from Tony <laughs> Felder? <laughs> nah, I can draw for real. Damn, very cool. Um, Yeah, so are you guys – totally wrapped up with your regular season or do you have anyone left uh on the calendar he's over the playoffs is up next damn so, when does that start when does the mia tournament start i'm not sure i know the um the brackets i think come out in the next couple of days i know they've been saying it's like coming late normally from the mia but pretty sure it's coming out in the next couple no, of days no surprise there that the mia is fucking late on their bracket <laughs> Hey, I don't know. I hate the MIA. <laughs> <laughs> you said you hate the MIA? No, I don't know why everyone hates it. Like, I, all oh, I okay. Say, I hate the MIA. <laughs> how the MIA is this, how that MIA is that. The only thing I say about the MIA is they should have let my man Jeffrey Hill play this year because they didn't let my my teammate get his waiver for this year. I wish wow. he would. But besides that, I got nothing wrong with that. I MIA. think. I think. I think the MIA is corrupt. I think they're <laughs> they're like communist China. They're they're no fair. I think they should let your friend play. Also, I think <laughs> like they should allow more than four years. Like especially for the co- kids who was in COVID. Like it really took a whole year from them. And college basketball even gave the kids an extra year, fifth year seniors. So I just don't understand why like, the MIA. Like I just feel like it's like old fashioned. Mm. Like. Like they like maybe should like pick up to like new status if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. understanding that kids reclass, understanding that kids do other things. Like I don't know. Yeah, I feel that. Ex- so explain the situation with uh, I presumably your teammate. Yeah, Jeffrey. Oh, um, Jeff. They. I feel like they think our team would have been maybe overpowered if we had Jeff. He he was a kid who came in. He was OP. eight. OP is the kids say. Yeah, OP, OP. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he was, he's a great player. That's my guy. He's like family to me. He's on. He was going to play with us this year. He played with us last year. And he was 18 years old, everything. But since the COVID year was happening, he knew it was happening. He did a year back. And he got good grades in school, but he did a year back so he can get recruited because people, people want to go to college for free. They want to, like... And they just didn't let him get his year. And it's just, I don't know. I feel like people people should be able to play with the people who they want to play with. Like, I, I just don't understand it, but. Like, so yeah. Now, now here's, a, here's a hot topic. <clears throat> Controversial on the podcast because I get the public school kids, the Catholic school kids. I even get the NEPSAC kids on the podcast, the ISL. Right. What, how do you, what's your argument? What's your take on. Malden Catholic playing in the MIA against public high schools. How do you feel about that? If you can't recruit housing, coaches, coaches aren't going out saying, come play with us, come play with us. Like, I feel like a player should be able to like, if players are going like saying like, yo, you should come to my school. There's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day, um, Public schools have way more students than um, Catholic schools. And Catholic schools, are they cost money. So kids who are great at basketball but don't come from a lot of money aren't allowed to play in mm. the Catholic schools because they have to pay for school. So mm. finding those kids who are good at basketball come from wealth. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're that good. Both are allowed to play, but... It's not like it's not like you could just go find anybody and no, it's it's not like that. So I, I just think like I don't know. Like and I don't know. I just yeah. think it's just, no, it's a, it's an interesting point about the school enrollment because a lot of the times you guys in the Catholic conference schools are placed in much stronger divisions than they would be if right. they were a public school. You guys are going up against, you know, schools with um much much higher enrollment but then there's the flip side like maybe you guys aren't recruiting but like i've heard from a million people that like cm football is like actively recruiting people 
and stuff <laughs> like that. I don't know. You, you probably wouldn't know anything about that, but like. Yeah, my school, my school has never won a, a, um, a basketball championship ever. At my championship ever. My school's been in school for I don't know how long. So mm -hmm. saying like everyone's doing, maybe if, if schools are doing it, then I don't know, like. If you're recruiting, but like, it's still, you have to find kids who are willing to pay that money to go to the school. Hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, it's it's an interesting topic for sure. Who, right. who is the traditional rival for Malden Catholic in the, you know, in the Catholic conference? Who do you guys get the most fired Saint, up to play? Pretty sure St. John's Prep is our rival. Even though like, I never really like St. John's Prep and MC. I know it's a big rival, but like, I never really like, understood it if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah so i know but i know sjp because it's like the closer school with modern catholic modern danvers it's like right on the corner so i know that's like a old-fashioned rivalry yeah who do you feel like i guess if you don't feel attached to that is there a team is it bc high or is it cm like who do you get fired up i it's bc high because my stepdad joe chapman went to bc high so it's a <laughs> It's personal. <laughs> it's like it's it's in the it's in the family rivalry. So like, <laughs> they they beat me more times than I beat them. So I guess they got it for right now. But <laughs> yeah, did you? So did you get one over on BC High earlier in your playing yeah. career? Yeah, I want I want to have the conference championship last year. Word. Yeah. See, I'm like, I have like such, I I'm like completely blocked off with my historical knowledge of like all these sporting events. Cause I started the podcast in like June of last year. So I've been like obsessed with all these high school basketball football leagues. Like I never right. thought I would be once I go off to college. Now I'm all into it. Right. Like, as far as that goes, like I have no, like a year ago, was, I wouldn't have known anything. What school did you go to? I go to, I go to North Carolina state right now, but I went to Dover Sherburn high school. Dover Sherburn. Yeah. You ever heard of that place? No. No, well, we actually do have a MIA state championship basketball team. So, um, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, but we were in like, uh, no, I don't want to take away from actually, it was D3. It wasn't even that low. It was, uh, and it was my senior year of high school, but I was on indoor track. <laughs> guys, God, I can't, I can't say nothing for right now. Hopefully, I can say at the end of this year. Right now, nothing yeah. Bad. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm actually, so I'm going to just quickly look up um, and just see like if there's any more information on the website. So do you know who the main teams that you're going to have to look out for in your bracket are? Do you have any information on that? Like what teams are going to be like loaded? Like the teams, the team, the main teams that like I've been hearing about is North Country and Mansfield. But I don't know much about them because they're on, we're the North, they're the South. But we're going to start looking into like who we're going to play, but we're just focusing on one game at a time right now. So when that bracket comes out, team that's on our list, that's who we're going to really focus on and learn about and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So I see you guys in D2 being ranked number one. Um, and then you got Mansfield at number two, Lemonster at three, Norwood at number four. They're good. I know them just from the TVLRs. They got that kid Noah Bodette, who's a stud. Burlington, North Quincy, and then and then it fades off a bit for sure. Yeah, that's a, I mean teams from all over the state on this list list as I look at it, it's crazy. And then are you at all like like you said last year getting the Catholic Conference Championship? I mean it's as tough as it is to to think about. Would would you guys have gotten a state title last year if you'd been allowed to compete in a tournament? In my opinion, definitely. My team last year. Like, there was just not – I don't feel like there was a component of us that was a weak spot, mm -hmm. even though – no, no, no. I'm not even going to say that. I'm not even going to say that. Mentally, we had a weak spot. That, that, was, that was where our team was struggling with, like, being connected. We had so many scorers on our team last year, so many players who were good, so many talented players. We were by far the, probably the most talented team in the state. But mentally, we was just – we wasn't there, if that makes sense. Like we had to really, but by the end of the year, we was we was there. I would definitely say we was there. That's why I think we won the state championship last year. Cause um, 
I did, I just can't see nobody beating us, especially in Division Two last year, because last year we was just a dominant squad. Yeah, it's tough, and it's the story of so many teams I've talked to that just didn't get their chance to win like their state title. You know what I mean? And it just sucks. Perfect. But at least, hey, you got this year. You're coming in ranked number one. Hopefully, I mean, yeah, with all the games over, I don't know when that list I was looking at was updated, but it must have been sometime in the last few days. So I can't imagine. Um, much would change. Um, but, yeah, going into the tournament. And you guys will probably, it sounds like, have a bunch of home games. No, no, no. I think we have three. Three? Yeah. And, I, and then I it goes over have... to, like, neutral site? I think we're always going to be wearing our white jerseys because we're going to be home. Mm. One. So, that's the good thing. I know that, that's never been – all my years before that we had playoffs, I've never, never been – I had one home game. And my like my two my first two years playing one home game, and we won we won, and then the second round I always lost. My freshman year, my sophomore year, second round always lost. My first it was North Andover. It was a really close game. There was a bunch of seniors on that team, but we was we was right there. We just lost by like three or four points. My second year. Beverly. That's that was why that game was so big. It meant so much to us. Because mm-hmm. um, we lost to Beverly by like 21 my second year. Mm-hmm. They killed us. Just dominated us physically because it was older. Like my team back then was basically like the same team. Not even. We was not even close to the same team because we were super young now. And we were super young back then as well. Mm. Yeah, so it was a little bit of a revenge win there against Beverly, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, re- revenge, revenge tour, as it as it said. Damn. Sure. Yeah. And they, they, they was chirping my big man, Jamari. They were saying, like, like when they beat us in my sophomore year, Jamari was a freshman. Do you know the big talker on my team number one? Yeah, well, I've, I've heard about him. He's like 6'7 or something. He's dominant. He's... He has offers from Providence. He's just he's doing his Wait, thing. How, how big is he? Six seven. Okay, okay, yeah. So I got that right. Damn. Jump the gym, can shoot the three ball, can dribble. But hey, his freshman year, we played them. They was just seniors, so like they was more physical than us. So they they like dominated us when they they were saying like how he's a little boy, basically like be his father. So then so when we played Beverly, he was just like we're gonna remember this going into this game. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what happened. Oh, shit. What's the most annoying chirp you can get from a student section? Like, what annoys you the most? I don't think I want to say that because they're going to go straight to straight to it. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, don't give away tournament, whatever. Tournament's coming up. I can't say it because if I say it, they're going to say it. <laughs> I can say it. I can say it. We're home. We're home. The most annoying thing is saying I'm too small. That is the most annoying thing anyone can ever say to me. Saying I'm too little, say, like, come on. Like, you know, oh my gosh. People, when they say too little, too little this, too little, like, it annoys me so much. But like, I, I've always been too small. So like, it's, it's, it's like becoming like whatever to me now. Cause I, I always been small, like since I was a little kid. But like, mm. whatever. Yeah, I, you just got to remember, man, that they're on the stands and you're on the court for a reason. Right. <laughs> oh, man. I heard um some kids were telling me BC High was the worst to play against because they sing the ABCs when people are trying to shoot free throws. No, they're, they're, they're just – this year, like, I'm going to say the years passed, but this year they they got it for the mm. for section. I'll say my, our crowd is – really good but their crowd this year is i say top tier yeah do you guys have a name for for your student section like the way that bc has like chirp nation like what's yours yeah. called i was on the pit the pit i like yeah. it that's menacing right damn what are some of the other good sports at malden catholic do you guys have other strong teams hockey Hockey for sure. Football team's on the rise, even though this year they didn't have a great year. They're they're on the rise. Um, baseball. I know my my one of my best friends, David, he plays on the team. Ross, they're really good. They they was all on varsity since like 
since like freshmen. So I know this year they should be really good. Um, so I'll say a lot of teams this year will be very good. Mm, yeah, very much so. I once I brought this up a few times on the podcast, but I'd love to get this theory. I mean, being a, a Catholic conference basketball player, I have to ask you. It was a stand-up comedian. He, he was saying that Catholic kids are better at basketball. Is, is there some truth to that? Can Catholic kids ball? Um, what I would say is the Catholic conference, in my opinion, don't, my opinion, you could call me out, do that, but I would say the Catholic conference, in my opinion, is the best conference in the state by far. Just because anybody in the state playing a Catholic conference team knows it's going to be a challenge no matter which team you play. Like, you know, it's going to be a challenge no matter which team you play in our conference. Like, if you have the Catholic Commons team on your list and you're, like, a public school, you know it's going to be a game. So that's why I would just feel like Catholic Commons is the best conference in the state. Damn. Is there a game that sticks out in your head that you just, like, absolutely popped off this year? Like, what, what's been your, like, season high? I got shoes this year. Mm-hmm. That was my at like 35. Um, Damn. We played in the first half, but then like in the second half, like we just picked it up. I just was like, my coach was yelling at me saying I'm not a leader, saying I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm like, all right, watch, watch, watch in the locker room. I'm like, like we just, we sat, got into a little argument. He's like, I was like, watch. But me and my coach are like this, like me and Walsh, they're like, like literally like this. So he's yelling at me. I know how to take it though. Like he he always yells at me, but I know how to take it. I know it's out of love. And mm-hmm. half I just basically dominated. I uh, got like probably five steals, probably like eight assists, and just scored the ball very well, hitting threes and stuff like that. But like a game, the team played well this year was St. John's Prep. The mm-hmm. first time I our team dominated. Mm-hmm. Like KC catching the oops, like every other play, Jamari hitting threes, Nikki did not miss that game. Nikki Martinez did not miss, Matt didn't miss. It was just, uh, our team was just flowing that game. That night was just crazy. First. Yeah. That, that's a super interesting story that I feel like gives insight into the team. Like the fact that you came, you know, you argued like men and then you're able to just get fired up and play hard. And I think so many people that grew up in the generation we did, can't get yelled at and they can't take it and they crumble they crumble like a little kid but you need to be able to have that dialogue you need like you need to be able to get screamed at every once in a while and it's cool that you were able to take that and turn it into a positive thing and say watch me watch me excel watch me do my best i think that speaks a lot to your character as a player and as a person no and i and i can't get i can't take none of that without my stepdad like my stepdad, he's my also my coach for Spartans. His name is Joe Chapman. He's like, he runs Team Spartans. Ever since I've been in fifth grade, he's been ripping off my head. So he really like, <laughs> he really taught me like how to take things from coaches and how to not take it like they're coming at me, but take it like keep going harder. Like, cause you know, it's out of love. You know, nobody, no coach is ever gonna, I mean, maybe in some cases, but I know no coach that I have will ever say something for me to go lower. Like they're always saying out of love to make me better and make me a better person. Even though I may think it's wrong at the moment, mm. just taking it into consideration and keep going and keep getting better. Wow. So your stepdad, Joe Chapman, runs the Spartans actually. Sure. That's crazy. Wait, is he, does he run the team that you're on or is he like the founder or like the president? Yeah. How, does, how does that work? I'm, I'm not familiar with the Spartans. Nah, he's I, mean, I, I know I know of the Spartans. I've interviewed, I think, one or two of your guys, but I do so many Middlesex Magic interviews that I'd love to hear a little bit about how the Spartans works as well in the organization. Not nah, for sure. No, nah, Joe Chapman, he's the founder of um, Spartans. He, he made Spartans probably, uh, I would say, nine years ago now. And um, he started from nothing, like really nothing. And he just grinded his way all the way up into having like one of the best programs in New England mm-hmm. in the country. And like he literally like single-handedly, him and Al Rule, like single-handedly just made a great phenomenal team now. And now we're co-founders with New York Rens. It's a UIBL team in New York. And um 
Now it's go team sparring. Now it's team sparring and New York Rens together. Wow. Keep, it's because the Instagram. I don't know why. Yeah, that's incredible. He he just completely grinded, started with no, you know, no nothing. Uh, and he just went and made it happen. I love people that are like self-starters like that. So what is what is that role like, you know, crafting an organization? How does that involve it? Is it advertising to players? Is it talking to leagues to get set up matchups? Like, what is that kind of work like that when you're around them, you see them doing? What is the the brunt of that grind all about when you're starting um, uh, an AAU organization? Um, nobody's like him. Like, I've never in my life met anybody like him. He's just like, he knows what he's doing. And like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, he knows exactly what to do, when to do it. He's just, he knows how to get kids to come play with, with sparring. He knows how to, like, win games. And he's by far, in my opinion, the best coach. Like, he's just, he was a college basketball coach for a couple of years at Pine Manor College. The college literally didn't win one game. I mean, not didn't win one game. Never won a championship. He comes in first year Catholic, I mean, conference championship. Like, he's just, I don't know. He's just a great coach, a great person. He's just, I don't know. Yeah, it's so it's so fascinating to hear you talk about him. And I think everyone knows probably one or two people in their life that they're like, that person is just like magnanimous and competent and they just, things seem to go right. And they have sort of this, gravitational pull around them where they are they are able to bring people in and be sort of admired and stuff like that and it's cool it's cool to hear like that that's how that organization started right around a figure like and who and who's the other guy too that you said was involved um he's like my he's my cousin word okay cool do you think you'd ever want to be involved in coaching once your uh, playing career is done yeah for sure coaching i love basketball so i'll always be around it i've put i probably coach and like later after my career is done I'll probably be a coach Mm -hmm. yeah do you have aspirations to play professionally yeah definitely if I make that little I'll definitely like overseas whether it be the highest level I definitely Mm. have you seen the um the old man in the three podcast old man yeah no no no. it's the (laughs) that sounds weird the JJ (laughs) Reddick podcast Oh, the JJ old man in the three, you know, oh, like Ma- podcast. Yeah, you know that one or what? Which one? So it's called yeah, it's JJ Reddick. You know, he's a obviously yeah, yeah. playing, and he interviews like Coach K and Jason Tatum, and um and like all these NBA players come on, like Chris Paul, and it's just yeah, I just came across it, and I've been like obsessed with it, and so he gets people talking about stuff that. Like, you know, when it's like the NBC or the Nesson reporters after a game and they're like, Jason, what do you think about like people saying that um, that you and uh, Jalen Brown like should split up? And he's just like, you know, I'm not going to talk about that or I don't listen to any of that. But when he's on a podcast with like another player, he's like, yeah, what do you think of that stuff? And he like goes into depth and he's like, yeah, he's like, I think it's ridiculous that people think me and Jalen Brown should be split up or two young stars. He's like, I talked to Jalen, like, do you like it in Boston? He's like, yeah. He goes, do you like it in Boston? He goes, yeah, I like it here too. So it's like, cool, because you get all these insights through like the podcast. You know what I mean? It's right. very cool. You should check it out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Are you a podcast guy at all? Do you listen to any yeah, podcasts? Yeah. AJ Reddick, I tell you, I'm like, I always watch his podcast. His podcast are, I watched it with Davion Mitchell, with all the players, like, um, he had one with um Chris Paul. I seen that one. Mm. Um, with who's I watching? I forget who I was watching. Oh, Damian Lillard. That's like one of my favorite players, Damian Lillard. I watched that whole podcast. I just like hearing like what the NBA players say. Like, like they be saying like who's the smartest player in the league? How this player is like, and things you just don't really see. Like being like a fan of the NBA, you just like. You understand it more when they like talk about it. So I, I always watch JJ Reddick's podcast. I yeah. didn't know it was. Yeah, well, because it I, it's like that book, The Old Man in the Sea, by um, I can't remember who, but yeah, it's a famous like classic novel. Um, maybe it's Herman Melville. 
actually now I feel bad that I don't know who wrote that book. But so it's like the old man of the three, because obviously he's a three point shooter. Right. Let me look this up to see who wrote this book. I'm gonna feel dumb if I got it wrong. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway. Okay, I should have known that. The Old Man in the Sea. That's a short book. If anyone wants to read it, that's a good book. Um, about persistence <laughs> and fishing in Havana. <laughs> if we've got any 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 fishing literature fans out there, please go check that one out. What did you What did you think of NBA All Star Weekend? NBA All Star Weekend. Curry just lit it up. Mm-hmm. That dude is a shooter. Um, people saying about the dunk contest, all those trash. I don't think it was trash. I think um, Obi Toppin's dunks were forced. I did not think Cal was going to win the three-point contest, but that dude really shoot the ball as a big man. <laughs> um, I don't know. Curry lit it up, though. I'll, I'll say that for sure. This dude is insane. This dude could really shoot the ball. Like, I never seen – nobody ever seen nobody shoot the ball like Curry. But, like, it's ridiculous to watch. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Curry was great shooting. I I I thought the dunk contest was was underwhelming as well. I just compared to like the old school dunks, like I just didn't like it as much. And then what's his name, Garrett? He was like the only good part of the celebrity game throwing down those dunks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the football player, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone else. They would just miss shot after shot after shot, like MGK and everyone. I was like, they were trash. The celebrity yeah. game was like garbage. <laughs> nah, I know. Everybody was saying how bad it was. I don't think the dunk contest is that trash. I don't know. Like, Obi Toppy could jump. Like, this dude in college was doing between the legs dunks. I never seen him dunk, but I just feel like people want to see, like, something crazy. Like, I was watching um, Famous Los. You know who that is? This is like no. a median on this. Huh. He's like, he was talking about the um dunk contest. He was like saying how it wasn't bad. He said, like, people want those players to start like flying. Like they like they nothing will <laughs> make them satisfied unless like NBA players start flying. Like, and I think that's true. People like these are humans doing these crazy dunks that like people <laughs> nobody, none of us could do, but people want to see better. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to put you on the spot because um, I uh, I know you're like I listed at least at like five nine or something. But can you dunk? Um, um, it depends on the day. <laughs> I used to be able to dunk like two summers ago. I could really dunk the ball consistently, but then I started having knee problems like out of nowhere. Like I don't know, like sitting in cars, I would like my knees. I couldn't sit in cars for too long. And they said it was like jumpers knee, and I really had to start stretching more. So, like, I'm really starting to get my jumping ability back now. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks, man. And it's such a fr- – like, the bounce is such a unique thing, too. Right. Um, like, with the knees or if you put on muscle, things like that. Mm-hmm. That's just a tough thing to take care of. Do you lift? Lift uh, sometimes. I really don't want to be too stocky, but I know in college I'm going to have to lift a lot. So, I'm starting to lift more. Mm. Yeah, what's your go-to move? What's your favorite move with the ball? With the ball? Yeah. Behind the leg, like, not like a regular between the legs, but, like, going downhill, stop on the dime between the legs, bring back, and just shot. <laughs> oh, that's a killer. Oh, oh, I meant to bring up um, on your IG story today. Yeah, that, that exact oh, my. move. That's, that's the exact move. That's my favorite move. <laughs> oh, my God. You <laughs> murdered that kid. His ankles are they're in another state. They're they're on Martha's Vineyard right now. I mean, like he was, no, that you, just, was bad. you killed a guy in broad daylight. No, that was bad. <laughs> was it loud in the gym when you did that? When you no, no, no. That kid? It, it was a 12 a.m. It was a 12 game, like 12 noon game. So like and it was a bus and it was like like, if I heard that game was going on, I was not going either. Like, it was too early in the morning. Nobody was there. But <laughs> I saw – Luckily, nobody was there for him, but it was I – won't, I won't call it out too specifically because uh, it's – yeah, I don't want to make the kid feel bad, but I saw yeah. a kid get, like – a kid hit him with a great move when he was, like, pressing on him in the backcourt. And this kid went flying like that, like, onto the ground – 
Yeah. And it was a literal ankle breaker. Like the kid limped off the floor and he hurt his ankles. Yeah. Like he, he just got toasted. So it was a literal ankle breaker. Now the, <laughs> the crux of it is the kid has ankle issues to begin with. Well, yeah. Like to the spectating fans, like you just saw him get crossed and now right. he's limping off the floor. Like that was the power of this kid's move that he just put yeah, out. That's bad. Nah, but that kid's a great player though. The kid that he's, he's definitely a great player. He's probably, I'm pretty sure he's young too. So he has a lot of growing to do. He'll learn. He won't forget yeah. that. Yeah. He'll definitely learn from that. I, he's a great player, too. Like, you can't take nothing away from him. It was just a good move and a nice shot, I guess. What do you think is the biggest thing you've developed as a player over the years? Um, Over the years, probably leadership. I, I'm going to just keep going back to leadership because I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was always, like, a kid who was, like, too nice. Like, it's hard for me to get on a kid. It's hard for me to yell at somebody and them. Um, understand like I always wanted to be the person that everybody loved if that makes sense mm -hmm. so having to be a leader you can't being a leader you cannot always be loved and I really learned that in my high school career like as a team my I feel like my team was always the most talented we just didn't have no leadership and it was because of me and my my stepdad would always tell me like you got to be a leader you have to you can't care about how people think of you to be a leader you have to like mm -hmm. really no matter what you're going to do, you're going to win. Like, the, it's about winning, and the people will love you after. But in that moment, you can't be, like, always want to be liked. You really have to say what you have to do to win. Get on your guys to be the hardest working people, basically. So I'll definitely say leadership. Um, always, like, I've always been in the gym ever since, like, seventh grade. Like, ever since sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade still to this day like every single day I've always been a gym rat especially because of my stuff that he's always forced me like go to the gym we're in the gym work out now work out now and um so mm. lastly and defensively defensively I really picked it up this year I feel mm. like like I was willing to put in the work to run every day to like because I never really understood like run how much running can really do for you keeping yourself in shape being able to run the whole entire game like it really helps on your defense. So I would say running, I mean, defensively, leadership, and really just shooting. Yeah, wow. Just the overall development. Yeah, it's cool to hear your take on leadership and, and the ways in which you can contribute and how you do contribute in developing that. And I think that's something that's almost overlooked in the way I think a lot of kids understand, hey, this is the steps to improve my jumper and the fact that you can improve your jumper when you put effort into it. But not everyone understands that leadership is a skill like that, too. And it's something right. that can be cultivated, something you can learn about by talking to wise people that have been there before or even, you know, resources on the Internet about leadership right. um, and that you can you can develop that. And that that at times, like I think you touched on earlier in the interview, um, <clears throat> is, you know, equally as important as the way you plan the floor, you know, right. is making sure that everyone around you is playing at that level, too. So it's very, very cool to hear your take on it and that it was a part of your uh, journey as a player all right all right yeah for sure and hopefully something too you can bring over to college for sure man yeah. Yeah. if there's um a player in the nba that you model your game after that you try to emulate you know that that's been an inspiration to you from your childhood who who would you say it is from my childhood damian lillard right now davion mitchell you mm. know who davion mitchell is yeah He's on the King. Yeah, he's from college, like watching him last year. They call him off night just because of how he could defend. This dude is strong as a Knox. He always knows where to be. He can shoot the ball, get to the rim quick. Like that that's really the player I want to be. Like him just watching him and taking little things from other players, like leadership from Chris Paul. Like just trying to like no, it's hard to be a leader like Chris Paul, but trying to learn as much as you can to like try to be like him if that makes sense Damian Lillard I just love Damian Lillard because how much of a dog he is like his loyalty his he's just he'll do anything to win and no matter people always tell him to trade but he still hasn't traded just because like he wants to win where he's at and he wants to get better with the guys around him rather than like force himself to win if that makes sense
Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. One question, um, and I think we'll wrap up on this because I love to end on this. Um, for someone that, you know, maybe it's an early, you know, younger high schooler player or a middle school player listening to this and they said, hey, I want to be just like Tony. I want to score buckets and make assists and be a leader, play varsity basketball at a high level um, and get offers. You know, what, what would your advice to be? What would your advice be to someone like that that wants to get to where you are at right now? They discipline knowing that what makes you happy now isn't going to make you happy in the future, if that mm. makes sense. Like, like being with your friends now in five years, what is being with your friends then going to do for you? Like going to parties now, what is that in five years going to do for you? Being in the gym, knowing, like putting in the work every day, sacrifice, you have to always, if you want to be great in something, you have to sacrifice something. So sacrificing what you want to do now for a greater cause in the future. That's what I would say. Mm, well said. Tony Felder, thanks so much for coming on the Young Shakespeare podcast. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. That has been this episode of the Young Shakespeare podcast. Thank you so much, Tony, for coming on. It has been a pleasure to talk to you. You're now one of my uh, more favorite players in the state, so I'll have to be rooting for all the Catholic Cover <laughs> tournament. Um, and yeah, so thanks so much to Tony for coming on. Thanks to everyone who's listening, watching, liking, and subscribing. And thank you so much um, to the subscribers. And please tune in to the next episode of the podcast.